this checklist of five basic KPI formulas with examples for each one will help you decide the best way to calculate your KPIs. I define a good performance measure as a quantification that provides objective evidence of the degree to which a performance result is occurring over time. So you need to be sure that the way you're calculating the values of your performance measures or KPIs, your formula, really is quantifying the right evidence and to the right degree. Now I have for you now some tips to help you decide what the best quantification method is for each of your performance measures. In other words, what is the best KPI formula to use for what you're trying to measure? Basic KPI formula number one is the count. Counting is by far the easiest way to put a quantity to something you're observing. For example, the number of customers who are satisfied, the number of workplace accidents, the number of sales, the number of processes that are automated. Now counts work very well when the arena um, or the scope or population within which you are observing a performance result stays pretty much the same size over time. But when your population changes over time, counts are misleading. An increase in the count might simply be because the population size is increasing and not because performance is changing. So in cases like that, a percentage will tell you with more accuracy the degree to which your performance result is happening. Now basic KPI formula number two is the percentage. Percentages are counts of the number of things or people in a population that exhibit a particular performance feature and it's divided by the total population size then multiplied by 100. For example, the percentage of customers who were satisfied, the percentage of employees that were injured at work, the percentage of sales calls that resulted in a sale, or the percentage of processes that are fully automated. Now percentages are great when you're interested in how much of a target population matches your performance result. But percentages assume your result is black or white. Either customers are satisfied or they aren't. Employees are either in an accident at work or they're not. They don't tell you the degree or the extent though, like how satisfied or how injured. Now basic KPI formula number three is the sum or the total, where counts are usually considered discrete measures because their values can only be integers or whole numbers. Sums or totals are generally considered to be continuous measures because their values can, um, can take any numerical value at all, including decimals. For example, the total time spent making sales calls, the uh, total sales revenue invoiced, the total distance travelled. Now similar to count, sums and totals can be misleading if the size or the scope or opportunity varies over time. So if the total time spent making sales calls in both May and June is 45.25 hours, but the total number of sales calls in May is twice that of June, you'd probably assess performance differently. Now basic KPI formula number four is the average, and average is usually a sum or total divided by a count of things or people um, that the sum was, was based on. For example, average customer satisfaction rating, or average days lost due to injuries per employee, or average sales revenue per sales call even average cycle time of delivery. Now, when you're interested in understanding the overall level of the degree or extent to which a particular result's happening, and not just interested in whether or not it's happening, then averages are the way to go. The three main limitations of using averages, however, are one, small populations, two, outliers, and three, asymmetrical or skewed distributions. Now the first limitation, small populations, that can make your average very volatile over time and, and make it appear more accurate than it really is. Averages based on two or three values are next to useless. And in that case, you might need to measure less frequently, like changing from weekly to monthly, so that you have more data. The second limitation, outliers, 
can greatly skew your results, uh, like one or two employees having hundreds of days off work due to very serious but very rare injuries. Usually it's well accepted to leave outliers out of the average calculation and just make a note about them as a, as a footnote, for example. The third limitation of averages is when the distribution is asymmetrical or skewed because it can skew your average, like when most sales are between $100 uh, or $1,000, but there are still quite a few that go as high as $10,000. Now in cases like this, a median might be a better indicator of the center of the distribution. Now basic KPI formula number five is the ratio, and ratios divide one measure, the numerator, by another measure, the denominator. And they're quite different to averages because the denominator isn't a count of a population, it's usually another measure of the same population. So for example, total sales revenue received divided by total sales revenue invoiced, total sales revenue divided by total hours spent on sales calls that generated that revenue, or total freight tons delivered divided by the total distance that it was transported. So ratios are a great way to measure productivity. Uh, the numerator is your output, and the denominator is your input. Now keep in mind though that it's very easy to make your KPIs or measures unnecessarily complex when you use ratios. When you take ratios, make sure they tell you something really sensible. Now of course, there are many different mathematical calculations that you can use to design your measures. The most important thing to aim for though is that the measure you design is very strong evidence of the goal it will monitor, but also feasible enough to implement in your organization. Now a good place to start is to take a closer look at your performance measures or KPIs that are just simple counts. Is that the most appropriate way to quantify the performance results that you're trying to evidence? Maybe not.